Hey guys, thanks for checking out our video on the stuff to make stuff slab flattening router slide. This is our 47 by 79 setup. Uh, whether you get the bigger setup or a little bit smaller one, all the pieces and setup is going to be about the same. These are the things that will make this easiest for you to set up. Some clamps, a straight edge, you'll need uh, some screws, some sort of a driver, if you want to pre-drill it, drill bit, and your favorite high horsepower router. If you don't have a Porter Cable 3 and a quarter horsepower router or a Triton high horsepower router, uh, we'll show you how to drill the holes to get that set up. To mount a router besides the Porter Cable or Triton, the best way to do it is to take the bolts off, loosen the bottom plate. Um, you can put a mark on there so you can follow it. Flip it upside down. You don't want your handles going this way because we're going to have rails going through and you're going to have dust collection port here, so some handles stick over that. So keeping the base plate with the router, an orientation like this is good. Lift it off. Now I can center the plate and make sure that my holes are not going over the other ones. Take your marker, mark your holes, or use a center punch and drill your holes. And then on the bottom side, we like to countersink them to keep the fasteners out of the way of your table or whatever you're working on. Our rails have pins on them, so the pins align. Press one pin into the other. Sometimes you kind of wiggle it so they have a really tight fit. So we get that in there. Then I'll put my straight edge on it and just lightly clamp it to it. Just make sure we're nice and straight. I'll put one at the start of the next rail. And then one at the end. Now these rails extend. If you needed, you could have a 20, 30 foot long table and you just keep extending these rails. They just keep connecting to each other. If you don't have like a piece of wood, a four by eight sheet like this, what you can do is you can just take strips of it on the table saw, rip them down and just stack them up and you can do it on your concrete floor or wherever you need to. Some people do it on the bed of their trailer. We'll put our height adjuster on the rail when you set it on. You want to not be too forceful, put it on there nice and gently. Sweet. Then we'll put in our crossbars. These are make sure it's nice and firm. Go over to the other side. You want to make sure that your brackets are flush with the back here so that the two brackets will be parallel. Okay, now that we have that side on and square and flush, we'll put this on once again very gently. We don't want to knock the ball bearings out. We'll slide it on. I'll use a couple bar clamps to clamp it from sliding towards me. Then I will take the other end, slide it on. Once again, making sure that the, the bracket's flush to the back of the groove. And I just want to pay attention to where I want my rail. So about there is good. So it's flush, it's square. I'll grab our uh, handled Allen wrench and then tighten it on. Two rails together, lift the carriage up, slide it in. I like to have the two ends offset by just a little bit so when the carriage goes over the, the, the grooves it's a little bit smoother. Uh, I already pre-drilled this one. Screw that in.
There you go, now we're set up. If you wanna store this, a lot of people have asked uh, how to store these. The, the best way is uh, you can either unscrew the rails and slide them out if you're done with your project, or if you're gonna come back to it in another uh, few days or a week, then you can go ahead and slide it off. And go ahead and set this on the floor, in the corner, on a shelf, um, wherever you want. You can leave this assembled or you can take it apart. Thanks for watching.